This morning, an incredible story of survival. A man rescued after 23 days stranded alone in the Alaskan wilderness. You can see SOS written in the snow as the rescue helicopter hovers above. When Tyson Steele's cabin went up in flames, he was left with nothing but the clothes on his back and the stark realization that he was completely alone in the freezing Alaskan wilderness. With no means of communication and minimal supplies, Tyson was forced to rely on his survival skills and instincts to stay alive. The following three weeks was a battle against the odds as Tyson endured bitter cold, hunger and solitude, clinging to life by his own resourcefulness and strength. This is the incredible wilderness survival story of Tyson Steele. Tyson Steele was born and raised in Utah, but like many, he always had a fascination with Alaska and the lifestyle that it could offer. After finishing college, he decided to pursue his dreams of living off the land and moved to the last frontier in 2017. He bought a remote cabin in the Susitna Valley, over 20 miles from the nearest town, with the intention of living a self-sufficient lifestyle. He was drawn to the solitude and simplicity of life in the wilderness, relishing the challenges that came with living off the grid. Tyson described himself as a lone wolf and a minimalist, and would often speak passionately about his love for the wilderness and the freedom it offered him. Tyson's cabin was located in the remote wilderness of Alaska, approximately 20 miles away from the nearest town, Skwenta. And even still, just to give you an idea of how remote this area is, Skwenta has a population of just 30 people. The cabin was situated in an area with no phone signal or access to roads, making it challenging for anyone to locate him. Additionally, the area was covered in deep snow most of the time, which made it difficult to navigate without snowshoes or skis. However, this is exactly what Tyson wanted, and he had everything he needed to survive in his cabin, including food, water, and warmth. The cabin had a wood-burning stove for heats and cooking, and there was a stockpile of canned goods and dry foods to sustain him for an extended period of time. He was also equipped with tools for chopping wood and repairing the cabin, which he used to keep himself occupied during his long time in isolation. For two good years, Tyson lived the life he'd always imagined. However, he never could have imagined the trials he would face when his cabin burned down, leaving him alone and vulnerable in the harsh Alaskan winter. On December the 17th, 2019, Tyson woke up in the middle of the night to find his fire had gone out. He was freezing cold, and needed to get the fire started quickly. He decided to put some cardboard in the wood stove to get the fire going faster. Unfortunately, this proved to be a costly mistake. As the cardboard burned, a small ember fell out of the stove onto the cabin's roof, which was made out of plastic. Without realizing, he fell back to sleep, only to wake up a few hours later to his cabin being filled with smoke and flames. He ushered his dog Phil outside and fled into the sub-zero temperatures, wearing nothing but his pyjamas and slippers. In the chaos and confusion of the moment, he was forced to leave behind all of his possessions and supplies, including his food, clothing, and tools. He watched in horror as his beloved cabin, which had been his home for two years, burned to the ground. Tragically, in the panic and chaos, Tyson realized Phil, his Labrador, hadn't made it outside. Despite his best efforts to save him, the flames and smoke were too intense and he was unable to reach Phil in time. The loss of his loyal companion was a devastating blow to Tyson, who had considered Phil his closest companion and protector during his time in the wilderness. At that moment of time, he didn't care about losing any of his possessions or his home, he just cared about Phil. I urge my dog out of the bed. He's, he's scared to death at this point, trying to inch his way into just a corner to get away from everything. Um, and uh, he's 110 pounds, so I can't carry him. Uh, I just pull at him, pull at him until he he's, uh, understands enough to get off the bed, and he, he does. And, I, and he, he escapes my vision because there's so much fire and roofs collapsing, and I think he's out of there. I grab my stuff, and I he head out the door. And uh, it was shortly after, there that I, after that when I went back to grab my rifle uh, that I realized he was still in the house and I tried to save him uh, 
but the the flames spread like gasoline and I couldn't I couldn't get in there and um. Steele was now alone and stranded with no means of communication or transportation. Although he was only 20 miles from town, it was not a feasible choice due to the harsh winter conditions and the distance he would have to travel. He wasn't sure of the exact route, and the journey would have required him to navigate through dense forests and cross frozen rivers and lakes, which would have been treacherous and potentially life-threatening. Besides, his snowshoes burned in the fire, and he was left with only his slippers. Steele sat outside briefly, watching his house burn to the ground. He stated, I realised that every moment I spent sitting in the snow, just shocked and feeling sorry for myself, was wasting precious time. After the fire died down, Steele assessed the food that he had left. He had 60 cans, which meant he could survive 30 days on this food at the very least. With temperatures hovering around minus 40 Fahrenheit, Tyson's first priority was to find a warm and safe place to take shelter. At first he slept in a snow cave, but over a few days he set up a makeshift campsite with a tarp and some branches. He built this around the stove that burned his house down, which he found ironic. He said, It's actually a pretty strange love-hate relationship with the stove, because it started my house on fire, but I had to keep this thing that did this horrible thing to me, I had to keep it going. Due to him living off-grid, it wasn't unusual for his family not to hear from him for a good while, so he knew no one was coming to help right away. He figured, that if his family hadn't heard from him by New Year's Day, they would call for help. Steele created a large SOS sign in the snow near his camp, stamping it out and then dusting it with ash from the fire to make it more visible from the sky. And then, all he could do was wait. As the days turned into weeks, Tyson's survival became increasingly unlikely. He lost track of days, could barely move his hands and feet, and was slowly becoming delirious. Nevertheless, he continued to write in his journal and keep faith that someone would find him. Snow continued to pile up, so Tyson remained in his makeshift shelter. As he couldn't let the fire go out, Tyson barely slept, perhaps getting two hours here and there, but nothing more. By now, 23 days had passed and he was beginning to lose hope. Little did he know, his friends and family were worried. Steele's relatives grew worried when they failed to hear from him prompting them to contact the state troopers. A helicopter team was then dispatched to search for him and on day 23, he was finally found. The Alaskan state troopers released a statement saying, on Thursday, January the 9th, Halo 3 responded to a request for a welfare check on Tyson Steele, age 30, at his remote homestead, approximately 20 miles outside of Squenta. He had not been heard from for several weeks. Late that morning, Halo 3 pilot Cliff Gilliland and tactical flight officer Zach Johnson located Steele waving his arms near a makeshift shelter. An SOS signal was stamped in the snow outside. His cabin had burned down in mid-December, killing his dog and leaving him stranded in sub-zero temperatures with no cabin and no means of communication for 23 days. Tyson was finally saved. After his rescue, Tyson ate at McDonald's, had a warm shower and returned to live with his parents in Utah leaving his life in Alaska a memory. His story garnered worldwide media attention and it is clear to see from any of his interviews that he was greatly affected by the loss of his best friend, Phil, his dog. In one interview he stated, the worst part of all of this, I can survive 23 days again, but my dog was in there, asleep by my side. Many people were quick to compare Tyson to the likes of Christopher McCandless, but this is a comparison that Tyson doesn't like because unlike McCandless, he was supplied and prepared and as a result, survived. Thankfully, he didn't suffer any long-term injuries or illnesses from his 23 days in the Alaskan wilderness. And even though he is now home in Utah, his time in Alaska is not done. He one day wishes to return to Alaska to live out his days in solitude, much like before. Investigators later determined that the fire was likely caused by an ember from Tyson's wood stove, which had fallen onto the cabin's roof and ignited the dry, brittle wood. Despite Tyson's best efforts to extinguish the flames, the fire quickly spread, fueled by the high winds and extremely dry conditions. By the time Tyson was able to escape, the entire cabin was engulfed in flames and there was nothing he could do to save it. It was simply a mistake. Uh, uh, basically, I made a cardinal mistake from the beginning in my in a hasty in a minor bit of hastiness i was cold 
and I woke up at about one or two in the morning cold and I knew I had to stock the fire and the coals had died down. I, I should have built it properly and, and, but instead I just threw in a big piece of cardboard and some wood and then lit the cardboard on fire. I hope Tyson is doing better today and one day he can return to Alaska and once more live out his dream. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below and as always thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.